The fundamentals of hand chase threads in wood. Chasing threads in wood with hand tools, as far as we know, goes back at least a century. Teaching and demonstrating proper thread chasing is important. Conversely, it's just as important not to teach thread chasing using the wrong tool or not understanding the fundamentals of traditional thread chasing. Historical accuracy can be clouded with misinformation and deny future generations of turners from a clear picture of how thread chasing started. The most important aspect for me is to teach or demonstrate what is traditionally accepted for chasing threads by hand. Let's take a look. The origins of chasing threads with hand tools is not clear. What does a historical record say? How far back does that record go? The written record only starts when somebody first wrote it down. My best guess is that it had something to do with the Industrial Revolution, which began in England toward the middle of the 18th century, a full 75 years before it took hold in America. Now the tools necessary for thread chasing, of course, start with thread chasers. Bill Jones also used a point tool, a recess tool, and an inside tool. And I'm going to show you a little bit about all those tools as we go along. The one tool that was central to all the aspects of thread chasing is the armrest tool. Let's take a look at that. Now keep in mind that when I do use my armrest tool, I don't have to move my tool rest 90 degrees to the bedways. I'm working on my lid and I'm hauling it out and here is a shot of me drilling this with a drill bit and a handle. Perhaps our best written record is from the late British turner Bill Jones. The last of five generations of turners, his passing in 2011 at age 90 marked the end of an era whose roots were planted deeply during Victorian times. Bill Jones wrote daily in a journal for 50 years. He submitted handwritten articles on wood turning and working in his shop to the British publication Wood Turning Magazine. Those articles can be found in his two books, Notes from the Turning Shop and Further Notes from the Turning Shop. In this camera angle, I'm continuing to hollow out the inside of my lid for my box, trying to develop parallel sides as much as possible. With the armrest tool and the inside tool, I prepare the inside for eventually chasing threads in this area. With my point tool, I'm establishing a chamfer where the threads will start. And now I am cleaning off the shoulder and making a nice area to begin my threads. And the next process is to develop a recess, sometimes called a stop gap, on the inside where my threads will end. This prevents the threads from being stripped out as a thread chaser hits the back of the wall. The armrest tool is indispensable for all aspects of thread chasing. By using the armrest tool in my female chaser, I'm developing the threads on the inside of the lid. Ordinarily, the lid is the part you start with. I'm getting a very nice shaving from this. Again, boxwood is an excellent wood to chase threads in. As I continue to chase my female thread, my goal is to have my thread chaser at 90 degrees to the threads. Now I have three layers of pretty good threads on the inside of my lid. In this shot I'm facing off the base of my box with my point tool. I have the tool trailing downward to prevent a catch. A catch occurs when the handle of the tool is lowered 
and the point is contacting the wood. The wispy shavings indicate a sharp tool. Before hollowing the base, I will practice some decorations with my point tool. The point tool is an excellent tool for creating beads in either side grain or end grain. I often decorate the inside of a base or a lid of a box with my point tool. You're looking at what will become the inside of the base of my box. I'm now cleaning up the surface that will become the inside of my box. And in preparation for chasing the male threads, I begin to establish the tenon that will become the male thread. I continue to use my point tool and take off more wood down to the diameter of the lid as I check it here. I still have a ways to go and I'm just developing a little bit of a taper so eventually I can uh, have a rub mark on that male tenon that will establish my diameter and tell me if I'm close or not. Now as I continue to fine-tune the male tenon and take off more wood, as I use my point tool, I am pointing the tool upwards, but the point is not contacting the wood. If it does, I'll get a catch. Now in preparation for creating the male thread, I need to establish a chamfer where the threads will start and recess, as I'm doing right here, where the threads will end. Whether you're chasing the male thread or the female thread, your chaser needs to be at 45 degrees to your work. Here I'm just chasing threads on the chamfer and trying to establish a groove. I got my fingers on top of the tool pressing down into the tool rest. This prevents vibration. As I continue to chase, I'll bring the tool handle closer to me and eventually I'll end up at 90 degrees to the bedways. This will establish a nice parallel thread. Now as I continue to chase my threads, I take my left hand out of the equation. Your left hand should not really be pulling the chaser across the threads, but rather your right hand is pushing the chaser into the threads. This is what cuts them. The groove simply allows the chaser to follow along. Now I'm going to try my base and my lid together and see how they line up. I have a natural imperfection in the wood which also indicates grain alignment. I'm a little bit off and I need to almost make an entire rotation so what I'll do to correct this is to take a little bit off the back wall or that shoulder right here and that will allow my lid to screw on a little bit further and eventually I'll have my grain line up. Now as indicated here my grain is just about lined up. I need to take a little bit more off the back shoulder that'll allow my threads to screw on a little bit further. Here I'm taking off a little bit more from that shoulder and I continue that cut to reestablish the recess. That's the beauty of the point tool. Now I'm showing the lines that indicate I'm very close to having my grain line up, but my threads are still a little bit tight. So what I'm doing here is I'm developing a little bit of a taper on this. This will make my threads a little bit looser, allow them to screw on a little bit more, and have my grain line up perfectly. So that was my take on the fundamentals of thread chasing. I've got a little boxwood project here I can complete. Uh, boxwood is really, really the ultimate wood to chase threads in. And uh, all I gotta do is hollow out the inside of this and I can make a lidded box with threads. So thank you very much and uh, I'll talk to you next time.